What up? It's the King Amadeus, man. We rocking with Strictly Hip Hop. You heard? Lock in. Platinum Boy. First and foremost, cheers, bro. bro. Yes, sir. Welcome. Yes, sir. To the Strictly Hip Hop podcast. And um, first off, first and foremost, I just want you to let the people know who you are. Yes, sir. Where you're from, how it all started. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Let's get on with that. Man, King Amadeus, Bronx, New York, 169th Washington Avenue to be exact. A uh, multi-platinum bad boy hitman producer produced for over 90 major artists. J-Lo, French Montana, Chris Brown, Trey Song, CeeLo Green, uh, Papoose, Remy Ma, Lil Wayne, Tiger, uh, Wale, Stolly, Sprite, BT, ESPN, ESPN First Take. You know what I mean? Been all over the world with, with Trey Songs as his music director, tour drummer, 13 years and counting, 19 years in the game. Uh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and as you asked me, I'm, like I said, I'm from the Bronx. Um, I'm from where I'm not supposed to be here, honestly. <laughs> yeah. You know, from the hood. I'm from, man, a lot of people that I was with that I wanted to be around or hang around, you know, unfortunately isn't here anymore. Um, but I can honestly say that, you know, music is something that saved my life. Um, and, and that's why I'm still here today doing what I love to do. And, and as we was talking off offline where... I'm able to provide and take care of myself and my family, man. So it's a blessing to be in the position that I'm in. I'm glad I'm here sitting with you, you know, to just chop it up, get yep. the gems, you know, give everybody that's tuned in the gems and the knowledge that they need to, you know, be where I'm at and even further. And that's that's real important. How, how important is that to you to just be able to um, give back that's after right. all the knowledge and all the gems that you've picked up along the way? Right. You know, how important is it? To be able to give that back to people, even like myself, just like younger, the youth. You right. know, I love just... it, man. I love it. I'm passionate about it. You know, I do. I speak to schools. I speak to kids. I go to colleges and speak. You know, anywhere or any opportunity that I have, you know, to give back and pay for it, I do it. And I, and, and I don't do it based off of feeling like it's something that I have to do. It's more so of something that I want to do. You know, me coming up, learning, I had to, you know, make a lot of mistakes you know, mess up a lot, figure things out on my own. And my, my, my train of thought was, you know, why allow, you know, a young king like yourself to go through the same thing, make the same mistakes I've made when I can just show you the ropes. Like, yo, don't do that. Give them that, that guidance. You know what I'm saying? This is going to happen. And you're going to have situations where even though I'm giving information and valuable lessons and dropping gems, you know, you're going to have those hard heads. That you know, that know it all, that want to you know figure it out on their own. But yeah, you can't like, give you know, them advice. <laughs> yeah, man. So you know, I just, like I said, I'm very passionate about it. I'm glad you asked that. It's something that I love to do, and that's kind of where I'm at in life. When people ask me, you know, what's next for Amadeus? You know, and of course, making music, of course, making records. I still tour with Trey Songs. I have a residency in Las Vegas at the number one hip hop club out there. I, I go out there every weekend and play drums <laughs> alongside the DJ. You know, I got a lot of different things going on, but what I'm most looking forward to just here on is just, you know, having conversations like this where, you know, you can give people information and gems that, that are literally change their lives and, and push people into their destiny and, and, and fulfilling their dreams like I'm doing it, you know, I have done and doing every day. Yeah, that's, that's a token right there. Yes, sir. For real. And, um, we just gonna we just gonna skip around a little bit. Like I'm a music geek first and foremost. You feel me? So I want to know off the top of your head, okay. what's your favorite record that you've been a part of? That's a great question. Very challenging to even try to narrow it down. Um, the catalog, man, man, it's crazy. I would if I can give you two, and you and I say two. Oh, there you go. See now we friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, and no order. But um, it's a record that I did with uh, Justin Bieber. Okay. Um, on his Christmas album, and the, rec the name of the record is called Christmas Eve. Um, and I choose that because one, Christmas comes around every year. Yep. <laughs> Christmas Eve comes around a year, and shout out to Chris Brown. Chris Brown wrote it actually. Oh wow. And um, you know, fun, it, it, fun facts. Yeah, here. fun fact. Yeah. And it comes around every year, so no matter what, you know, there's always going to be Justin Bieber fans, young, old, new. That's in circulation. That's Forever, just, yeah, that's not stopping. <laughs> like you think of like Mariah Carey, you know how you know how long she's dropped that album and that Christmas song that was like number one on the charts every year. It'll it'll do the same thing. So that um, probably uh, the ESPN first take theme song. Okay. Um, I produced that With and Stallion and Wallet. Yeah, right? yeah, and plays every day. Yep. <laughs> Comes on yes, multiple sir. times a day. I'm a sports fan. I'm, a, I'm, from, I'm from New York, so I'm a New York Giant. I watch I'm, first take every morning. So, man, you, you, you know, like, so it's like you waking up with me, pause. You know what I'm saying? Where 
you know, as you watch that, is, is something we that I created. We that way. We've seen the same thing. Absolutely. From a different place. Absolutely. You know? So that, um, I would say my first ever uh, placement, which was Foxy Brown, um, there's two songs. She wow. did a diss record, and, and I was, I remember I was shitting bricks. Foxy. She did a diss record talking about Eve, and this, and this was like when Eve was like, that's hot, almost, that's like, almost like you choosing sides. Being yeah. A part of that so song, I thought like, I kind of was a part of that because I produced it. So I was like, man, I was really nervous because I'm like, I love Eve. I want to work with Eve one day, yeah. and I don't want this record to hinder that. You know what I'm saying? But you know, one of the OGs pulled me to the side, like, listen, man, you made the beat, you did the track. You ain't got nothing to do with what she's saying on it, you know, Fast. so that. And then she chose a disc record, but there was another song called Cradle to the Grave, and it was the actual titled song for the movie and soundtrack. Cradle to the Grave. Yeah, Bro, DMX, that is one of my favorite Jet movies of all time. Wow. No lie, and I, I put this on everything. Bro, yesterday, I was in the studio, mm -hmm. and I, I, I recorded this song, the outro for my new project, freestyled it, and I, like... I spoke on that on that movie, bro. Like I spoke wow. in to the grave. Like that's that's a big thing for me. I love that movie. Wow, big that's DMX fan. That was my first start right there, man. I, don't, I can't even remember the year, like. But I remember it playing in the movie. It played in the movie for twenty six seconds. You see, I remember the time. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, the album, you know, was the me seeing my name on the credits after the movie was over. You know, you know, working on the record. Me walking in the store. It was a Fye. You know, what I'm saying, I bought the CD. Open up the CDC, my name in the joint. Um, you don't see those on the East Coast. Nah. And then the biggest moment of that for me was, you know, it went, it sold 500,000 copies, which is, which is gold um, and physical copies. You know, no shots at streaming, no shots at none of that. Because, you know, I'm, I'm still but in the game today. But hands. you had to buy it. Like you had to physically go to the store, no, you know, and grab a CD. So 500,000 copies went gold, and that was my first, my first plaque. So I would say those three things. Um, you know, it's monumental to me, and I can, I can you know, it's, it's hard. I know you mentioned five. Two more, two more. Uh, Mike Jones, Mike Jones. I did a record on Mike Jones' first album, um, and what was dope about it was it was the name of the song was called Grandma. Okay. So it wasn't like a, a club record, a joint that you turn up to. It was something that you had to really like listen to. Yeah, it wasn't like the hit record. You know what I'm saying? It was just but like in the cut. It, it was the most important record to him okay. because his grandmoms meant a lot to him. It, you know. Raise him, told him everything you know in life. So to have that type of song uh, with an artist is, is it was great to me, and that was actually the first album I went on to went platinum. Um, and I think wow. it's actually I think it sold like one point five. And this is this is digital, like I mean not digital. This is like hard copies, yeah, like actual CDs, cassette tapes, because cassette tapes was, was out back then. Um, five, five, um, man, I would say. That's like early thousands. I'm trying to think of a new joint because I, I'm I'm kind of like in my throwbacks right now. Um, That's fine. <laughs> you know what? Now I'm gonna stay there. Take him to church. So take him to church. I, I produced that for Cameron, and there was a diss. Him and Mace was beefing, and oh, there was a diss. A you know, against right Mace. Um, so I would have to say that because it was like a really challenging moment in hip hop because you know they came up together. They're from Harlem. You know, Dipset Harlem. You know, and Cam and every, you know, Jim Jones and Jewel, like they was really, really a tight unit. You know what I'm saying? Facts. So when they started kind of beefing, it was crazy. And, and to have that record, um, and it was actually when the, mo the moment when, when Mace retired and started, you know, doing the pastoring thing and preaching and, and representing God. So Cam was basically like challenging him, like, yo, how you still rapping? And you're saying you're a spiritual man yes, and you're sir. a preacher and you know you you're part of the church now it's like how you doing well, you're both? still trying to be out here dancing with video <laughs> on stage you right chill. <laughs> right so that was that was that's that's my five like i said in no order but um i think that was a dope question that you asked to kind of have me reminisce on records that i produced that oh, that's interesting. would consider my favorite yeah that you mentioned being on camera on side of that mm -hmm. because you're affiliated with bad boy right so how how does that even work? Well, the good part was <laughs> it was before me joining forces with Bad Boy, so I wasn't okay. a Bad Boy hitman at that moment when it dropped. So, and even if it if even if it did go down like that, you know, kind of like back to Foxy and Eve, where it's like it's made the beat, bro. <laughs> like yeah, of you know, course. Cam sat down and and wrote what he wrote to it, or freestyled what he freestyled to it, and, and recorded. It. I wasn't there. I had a, even if I was there, it's like I'm not going to stop an artist from communicating or expressing him or herself, you know, on wax to, you know, talk about what they want to talk about. You can talk about whatever you want to talk about, you know what I'm saying? And my, my job as a producer is just to make that the hottest sounding record I can possibly do, regardless of what you're saying on that track. 
You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Now, all right, so this might be another, like, really hard question to get with, but do you have a favorite artist that you've worked with? Or is there, like, an artist that you just, like, really love working with? Like, you like the creative process or whatever the case is? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say favorite, but I would say, like, I would, then I'm trying to figure out how to, how to put it. It's like, I, f I feel like I, sp I spent the most time with Trey Songs. like, we 13 years in, um, so there's so many um, monumental moments for me and us together, you know, because I started touring with him after the first album. Okay. You know, so all of the albums I got to, you know, see him create and be a part of putting together the live shows, you know, for these albums and for these songs that, you know, people love. Um, so just to see him grow as an artist, you know, as a man, um, is dope for me. So I would say, you know, I have the most memories, the most moments, you know, good, happy, fun, challenging, you know, when you when 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 your back is against the wall and you got to put together a dope show and you running out of time and yep. you know, you know, we opened up for Jay Z on the Blueprint Three tour, so we toured with Jay. We opened up for Usher on the OMG wow, tour. So we open you know, Jay. I we had Big Sean open up for us, you know, on an anticipation tour. We had another tour where we had Elvon and Miguel open up for us. You know what I'm saying? So like I have all of these memories and all these moments that we had, um, and we still have to this day because I'm still, you know, touring with them. Um, so I would have to name him. And again, not so much favorite, but just memorable. So many moments, um, so much history, you know, between us two together and us as a team and us as brothers. Um, so I would have to say him. So that that bond is just yeah. special to mm -hmm. not absolutely shout that out. okay. So wow, all, yeah. this, all this jumping around that I'm about to do is yeah, it's all good. We vibing, man. Portals right now. We vibing, man. Um, so first musical inspiration like what really made you feel like music is something that like i, I love and i could do like right. first thing um really young man really young um how young four, fourth grade i forgot how old i was but That's fourth like grade eight, nine years old. yeah right uh fourth grade and it was it was dope like my parents are very they love music all genres so i heard stevie wonder i heard um marvin gay i heard african bambada i heard curtis blow bro i heard you know, even church, Hezekiah Walker, man. And, you know, I heard all of these different genres and it made me appreciate it. And in fourth grade, I had the opportunity because they sent me to private school, Catholic school all my life. So I had the opportunity to pick up an instrument. And that instrument, as, as we're looking at right now, is the drums. drums. Um, Always wanted to play those. Oh, so that's, that's how it started for me in fourth grade. I fell in love with it. Not something that happened where well, I feel on purpose because I wanted to learn how to play the trumpet. Or uh, the saxophone. The sa you know what I'm saying? Bro, just to connect to this for one moment, in, in fourth grade for myself as well. Wow. Uh, they had, it was like intramurals in school for okay. instruments. Okay, well, wow. And you got to pick one, and then you would go, your parents would go rent you an instrument or whatever, and you would do this in school. Okay. And um, I signed up for the sax, you picked your top three, and you'd get one of them. Got I you. ended up with my third instrument, okay. but my top was the saxophone. Wow. And I ended up with the violin. Now, let me tell you how we're locked in. Okay. When my, my 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 parents kept me home on the day we went to choose an instrument that we wanted to pick, and it was it was like you know like your top three. I didn't get to do that because I wasn't there. Okay. Had no idea that that was the day that they were choosing instruments. Ah. Return the following day, all the slots are gone. Two instruments left: violin. Uh huh. And they didn't even say drums. It was it was percussion. Oh. So you and didn't I know said, what you was into. didn't even know what I was getting into, but you know, from the Bronx, or from but the you hood, said fuck the violin. <laughs> never carrying the violin through the hood. Bad enough. <laughs> I'm already wearing these slacks and these shoes and a, and yep. a dress shirt and a tie. Going to Catholic, yep. We never gonna attach a violin to that. So I was like, whatever percussion is, give me that. Go into the class. I see drums. I see the xylophone. I see congas. I see bongos. Everything that has to do with rhythm. Never touch drums. In life, never had any insp aspiration, inspiration for drums. But I'm like, this is the class I got to take. It is what it is. Yeah. Drum teacher sits down, plays a pattern. You just go around the room and see who can do this pattern. Plays a pattern. I sit down, play the pattern. Get up, the rest of the class goes around. Comes around, sits down, plays another pattern. See if you can do this. Everything he did, I did 
like flawless. Like it's if off, it was like off instinct. Oh, off instinct. Like like if I'd been doing this for ten years and he looked wow. at me and was like, You play drums? I was like, Mm-mm. Never once. And he kinda left, you know, not so much take me under his under his wing, but just kind of pointed me in a direction to like the professional drummers and the jazz drummers that were like dope at that time. Like, he hey, check this out, man. Like, yeah. Check this out. And I'm like, so you're telling me I could sound like this if I practice and apply it myself. And he's like, absolutely. Right? So, you know, start getting into the jazz thing. My parent, my mom switched churches. The church I was at didn't have drums. She switched churches and that church had drums. Ooh. Took me, dragged me with her one day, pissed. Come on, I don't go to no church. Get in there. There's two things that, that grabbed my attention. Keep it a buck. The drums and the amount of chicks that was in there. Okay. And I was like, so it's going to be like this every Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to be dressed up. They're going to be fly. And then I'm going to hear this music that's banging like that every Sunday? Cool, bet. And that was kind of like, when I heard, this is my brother. When I, his name is Steve Soup White. When I heard him play drums, I was like, this is it. And that was the defining moment for me as a musician of saying, I'm going to play these drums. I'm going to play the hell out of them. I'm going to put my all into it. I'm going to fall in love with this instrument. And that was the start. And that was fourth grade. And I never put the drumsticks down after that. The drums turned into production. When you think about production, you think about the beats yeah. and drums and, and beats production hand in hand you know what i'm saying and and that's kind of how it all came together gotta have rhythm. yeah for sure and i wish <laughs> I, I wish my fourth grade story goes that extensive but <laughs> the reality of it is uh i got about halfway through the class uh-huh. and uh, i got expelled from that school wow so, yeah now now that's um, stopped it I'm a, <laughs> now because that's what that's dope because so fourth grade i learned the instrument fourth grade my parents wanted to change schools right so we changed schools Get to the next school. I think it was fifth grade. It was it fifth grade or sixth grade, right? They had instruments, yep. but you had to pay. Ooh. And me going to Catholic school, they're already paying for tuition. And me and my siblings all went to Catholic school. So that's like 400 for me, 400 for my brother, 400 for one of my yeah, sisters. they got enough money into this. So they're like, we can't afford that. So I had to go to the next school and not be able to learn or play anymore in school. Now, I still had church. But it wasn't. You had less of an outlet. Yeah, you know. So, at that point, so I just kind of connected with you with that story in regards to not being able to learn in school, and Sorry. it was the same thing with me. And it turned into a more of a thing where it's like church. It ain't really like you learning. It's just like you play with the spirit is is is, is inside of you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You you playing whatever whatever you feel and spiritually, you know, from a spiritual aspect. And that's honestly where I was molded and shaped as a true musician and as a true producer because I'm learning all of the keyboard elements. I'm learning all of the live bass and the live guitar and understanding it. So it's not like you sitting down as a musical teacher and teaching me everything. So I can't read music, can't do none of those things, right? But I'm experiencing a feeling. And everything now is just a vibe and it's just a feel and it's just like, yo, go play whatever you felt. Go play what you're feeling. I can't tell you how to do that. I can't tell you how... What's right, what's wrong, because there's no right or wrong. No one feels the same. You have to no, process it differently and absolutely. figure it out differently. So the church is what developed me as a musician and as a true musician and as a producer. Now, the downside of that is there's so many opportunities that I'm missing out on for not being able to read. So I can get a phone call right now from Cats at Broadway. Hey, we need a drummer tonight, 10 p.m. You available? Yes? Okay, cool. Can you read? Because it ain't no rehearsals. It ain't no we're going to go over nothing. Is right. come sit down, play the drums. Read these notes. And read go these notes. It. Let's rock out. If you can read, don't matter. We'll put this in front of you. Let's rock out. So now, I was going to ask you in that, in that way. Um, so you, st- you basically, you said you started off instinctively. Now you're just feeling the rhythm, feeling everything out. Are you saying like even now, like you haven't really got in tune with music theory, like studying the no. notes and all that? No, because now I'm too, and I'm not saying I can't. But I'm too deep in now. I'm too deep in now. My name is my name. I've I've created a name and a brand for myself, which yeah, is you know in how to do what you do. high demand. And why would I go and change how I create now? You understand? Or change, excuse me, the way I see things musically or creative. It's worked for so long. It, it, if it, it ain't change, broke, don't fix yeah, it. it can change my whole, you know what I'm saying? Because there's a difference. Like, again, I don't knock anybody that can read, but it's a difference from a person that can read 
rather than a person that's kind of self-taught and developed him or herself because yeah. I can put this in front of you and you're going to play it. You're going to play it exactly how it is. But where's the freedom? You understand? Where is the improvision? Oh, where is the... To what's in front of you. So, so that's, that might be all you know. So if I say, hey, we're going to play this song tonight, this, but so, you know, halfway in, just go. Just go for it. Just, just go left. Make a left turn. Make a left turn at the light. And a lot of those people can't do that because if it's not front of, in front of them or if you didn't write the parts out, I can't go. It's like an artist not being in the yeah. freestyle. Now, you don't have to. It's like, wait, what am I supposed to what do, do now? What do I do? I'm not reading. And that's one of the things with us, whereas even with us and Trey Songs as a band, 13 years, time for tour. We go on, we talk about it a little bit, and we just go play. Right? Whereas it might take another band working on another artist two, three months of rehearsal time to create a tour. Like we've, I've been given two weeks for a whole tour. No. Oh. <laughs> Like, how many months are we talking on tour? Like, maybe a month and a half. Oh. You know what I'm saying? But the point I'm making is, you got two weeks to put a, to put together an hour and a half show. Oh, shit. Me and Chris, because we did a tour with Chris Brown. Trey Songz and Chris Brown. Between the Seas tour, right? You're going on tour with Chris Brown, we give you two weeks to put this together. You know what I'm saying? And you got to be able to feel it. You got to be able to try to figure out what you feel the people want to hear. What songs? How long are the songs? What guests you might have coming up? Are we going to bring Fab to come out and do Say Yacht? Or are we going, matter of fact, we going to Toronto? Let's see if Drake is in town so he can come out and, and, and come on stage and rock out on a Venisex. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, Jeezy is here. Let's see if Jeezy can come out. Oh, T.I. is on two reasons. Like, make sure. And I'm, I'll never forget it. We had a show in Atlanta. And Trey came to me and said, I got T.I. I got T.I. in town. I got Fab in town. Um, I got Jeezy in town. Right? This is right before the show. He need all them songs and on the set. And I need set. all them songs ready to go. Let me know how we going to... Let me know how... And this is my job as a music director. That's what I'm talking about. It. Yes, sir. You know, so let's figure out how... What, when they're going to come out. You know, I want them to do their own song too. So what song is that going to be? Ooh. You know, all that's on me. And it's all got to fit in. All Everything's got to go smoothly. This is, this is a day of Trey getting dressed. Yep. <laughs> you're dressed to go he's out. He's telling you this. Oh, yeah. We got and that coming out. So now I got management. Shout out to my brother George. That's saying, here's the file. Here's Yeezy songs. His Fab song, let's put it in the computer, let's load it up. I'm saying, all right, let's bring Fab out. We're going we're gonna to bring him out for Say Yacht, right? And then let's have Fab run into, you know, whatever one of his joints after Say Yacht, right? So make me better song, like... You know what I'm saying? Like, there. so yeah, it's all of that. Mind drum, playing drums still. <laughs> Calling cues. I okay. Trey, Trey can hear me in his ears. Trey can, my, Trey, Trey can hear, the band can hear me in the ears. The mix engineer can hear me in their ears. The monitor engineer can hear me in their ears. I'm, the lighting cues. Every, everything, wow. everything I'm calling while playing drums as a music director. And you're so you're basically like you're playing drums. You feel me? Like you're, you're right here with it, and at the same time you're you're right here with it. Like, right. You're pulling strings. Right. Wow. Yeah. So that's you know, a huge I, responsibility. I, very and with a big artist, mm-hmm. like that's he's no slouch. That no. is Trey Songz. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and you know, with that being said, you know, I'm we're we're far from perfect. You know, and I and I'm and Nobody I want to talk about that because it's like shit happens. There's been times where we on stage, we rocking out. I remember like my ears, because we have in-ears where we hear everything. If those in-ears, if, if, if the battery pack dies, if, if I have a misfunction in, in my ears, I hear nothing. So there's no speakers, there's no, like nothing. Those in-ears are, are the key to everything. Doing the show, we rocking, live, open up for Jay-Z. Then we was in Boston. Joints go out. Trace, now Trey can hear, Trey's rocking. But now Trey is rocking to the music that's, that's in the house. The timing of that music is different because of the fact that it's bouncing off the walls, oh. the, the acoustics. He, he hears it live. And, and he hears it ears. differently. So the timing is not right. So I had to stop playing because I don't know what I'm doing. I had to stop playing. Tell them to keep going, right? There's a track that's playing underneath. Which is like the background vocals, of course. stuff like that. It's a click track that's going like this in my ear. That's giving me the timing of whatever the tempo is for that track. So I tell them to shut that off, right? Yep. And tell them to keep playing, right? Now I know Trey can still hear me, so I go, I'm out. I can't hear nothing. You know what I'm saying? So no, there's not gonna be no drums. So now at that moment, we can never let you know in the audience that that's that, happening. That anything fucked up? You know what I'm saying? So Trey might stop singing and start dancing. <laughs> you know, he might, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's one story. I got another story where we in Detroit. 
and I have to use the bathroom. <laughs> and not number one. <laughs> okay, it's just and it's just bad. It's oh, it's all bad. Yeah. It's bad. So we there, and I'm like, yo, I use the bathroom. I use the bathroom. I go. And he's like, right now. I'm like, tell the man, like, right now, like, right now. <laughs> Runs me off the stage. Luckily, we're outside venue within trailers. Luckily, there's one there. So Trey is like trying to go to the next song. And they're like, we can't, but I'm the only one that can talk to him. So the keyboard player is like trying to tell him like, yo, bro, he ain't there. So he turns around like, yo, I'm, and you know, without you knowing, let's go to the next song, let's go. And he's like, <laughs> and he looks and, and doesn't see me there on the drums, turns around and was like, which one of y'all want my shirt? <laughs> oh my God. So there was a minute of like. <laughs> Five minutes, where the five is lo- the five longest minutes ever. Yep. Where he has to entertain them, you know, and the girls are going crazy and y'all want my shirt over there. But this is what he do. He's an entertainer. That's what he does, so he knows. And just naturally, he's like, naturally. I-, I can adapt to this. Absolutely, kills it. Right. I come back, put my put my mind, you know, my in ears in microphone. I'm back. Let's do it. He turned around. Niggas only, you know, the band hear me, whatever. Turns around, smiles, like, like dies laughing. Like, <laughs> he's like, all right, let's go. And I'm like, all right, let's go. And then we finish out the content. So these are things wow. that happen. I've seen Ho forget his verse because we open up with Jay-Z. You know what I'm saying? I've seen Ho forget yeah, a verse? Yeah, bro. I've seen Ho forget verses and just turn around and let the band say it or point out there that the audience said. Like, these are all... You know tactics that that happen where, you know, I, I got a homie that danced with Usher, my boy Eddie Morales, incredible. Actually broke his ankle on one stage, finished finished the whole show <laughs> with one ankle, with one with a broken ankle Impressive. just to push through because his part was so important, and he sacrificed himself, you know, to make sure that show for that particular night was what it needed to be. You know what I'm saying? So these are the these are the behind the scenes that I wanted the to just touch on that, you know, people don't realize when, you know, you spend your your hard earned money to go see your favorite artists, you know, a lot of time, a lot of blood, sweat and tears are put into these shows, you know, to make it a, a great experience for you so you don't feel like, you know, you wasted your money. Facts. You know what I mean? They working hard for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So you know artists Every out there, man, does. like invest in yourself, invest in your show, invest in your team, invest in your stage, like all of these different things matter. It ain't just about jumping on stage with a hundred of your people's screaming and yelling to the top of your lungs. Like, hold the microphone right, you know, p- practice, perform, rehearse, get you a hype man, a woman, and make sure they understand and know your lyrics or your songs. They ain't shouting over you. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's so many different things that artists need to know. It ain't just about jumping on stage and going for it. It's about, you know, you know, putting the work in and rehearsing and studying and studying the greats and studying who you admire and who you look up to. Like, we learned so much from Jay and so much from Usher, yeah. how to hold a microphone for Trey and when to come out and swag while you're on stage and just me, because Usher has a band too, but these dudes are like legends, like like drummer drummer that I look up to, you know what I'm saying? Oh. And he's like, so I'm, I'm instead of just being around, like, like, we did our set, which was before Jay and before Usher, and okay. then after we will run out to the audience to watch Usher perform. And to watch Jay perform. Hell yeah. Everybody. As you should. You know what I'm saying? And just... Your fans first. Yeah, right? man. And just taking all of these different moments. What can I do better on drums? What can I do better... Studying. Say what... Yeah, bro. Like, not just sitting there and just... Like, just me watching my instrument. You checking the stage crew. Checking Absolutely. the drummer out. The like, lights. okay, when did they go out? When did they shut the lights out? When, you know, how long is the pause in between each song? You're like, what happens if whole one take a break? All of these moments matter, man. And, and you gotta you gotta really work and put the work in and want to... Make sure that you give your fans that's coming out to see you. You don't know if that's the last dollar they spent to buy a ticket to come see you perform. That's the, you know what I'm saying? They got to get fresh. You know what I mean? Oh, you got to look at all of these different things that go into going to see a concert. You're not going to just show up in a sweatsuit. You're going to go decked out. You're going to get a cut. You're going to get a lineup. Sure, they're going to go get that you prime. Look you're going to go get that, little, best. you know, that little, that little, the, whatever they call it. Uh-huh. <laughs> you're going to put the eyelashes on that's driving me crazy these days. You know what I'm saying? Like the heels, the Louboutins, and you want to make sure you give them an experience. So that they walk away. Like, hair done, everything. Damn, man, I went to go see King. He ain't even really put on. He was high and falling out on stage and drunk and you can't, you know, these are all things. And I'm just, I'm just giving you gems, you know, that's, that's tuned sure. in. Like, you know, if you can, if you can manage... And you can be high, you can be lit, because I drink. I drink before, you know, and it's like, how? It's like, what it does is, not that I need it, 
it just takes the edge off. It takes the edge off. There's a lot of pressure running the show, you know, kind of spearheading everything. And like you said, we're talking about Trey Songs. We're not talking about any any artist. We're not talking about you know someone that's not known. Like it's Trey Songs, man. So it's like I mess up. I'm gonna have to. I'm, we're gonna have to talk about that after, you know. And and I've been in that situation plenty of times where you know something ain't go right, and that's my responsibility. And as a music director, as a man, you own up to it. You know, man, I, I dropped the ball on that. I messed up on that. You know, and you figure out how to not allow it to happen again. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, these are gems that everybody can use, you know, to just be able to grow. Oh, yeah. Um, wow. So, so many tour experiences. Mm -hmm. um, such a long journey so far in mm -hmm. this music life. Uh, where's your favorite place that has taken you? And I, and I say place like... We could start. We could start nationally. You know, maybe city, maybe state. Right. And then take it further. Like your right. favorite place in this world. You right. You know what I mean? Like. Um, I love that question, man. Um, I'll name a few. Um, I love Australia. Wow, that's a good. Start. Love Australia. Um, and it's funny because when we first traveled there, it was very challenging because of the time difference. Like they're basically twenty hours ahead. Not 24, but 20. Like yeah. Just somewhere in the yeah. Middle. So it's like right now, it's what time is it right now? We got uh, 8.16. Right. So out there, it's like, I think it's, it Four. might be 24. Hours. Yeah. So basically, it's the reverse. So out there, it's 8, 8 something in the morning. So going out there, you had to adapt and adjust, you know, because it's like I'm performing <laughs> at the time that I would be sleep. So you kind of like, fl you're flying from the stage, you kind of like flew through a day. Yes. Like, yes. Yes. Wow. So the jet lag is real. Oh, it's real. <laughs> so once you and normally, you know, when you do a show, you know, we've done tours out there and so normally we'll fly in and we'll get like two days just to be able to just adjust and adapt to the new time zone that you're in. Um, other than that, amazing bro. Like just the fact that we're at the bottom <laughs> yeah. of the earth, like the bottom of what's considered the world and to be able to go there and music take you there. It's just a blessing. If I stay there, um, I really love London. Like, London is just, I really love London. Um, it's a lot going on in London. A lot London. going on in London, but just from a, from, a, from a club and a party standpoint. For real? Like, I was definitely the guy in London. Like, just, but just making hey, the right connects. It's really turned like that in London, on. huh? Like, to the point where we would be out there on tour and Trey hit me like, yo, where we at tonight? And normally... You know, here or wherever it'll be, you know, you know, Trey be hosting events or hosting parties. But, like, I was, like, hosting parties everywhere in London. Like, wow. And was lit and it was packed and it was sold out. And I would, like, get on the microphone and, you know, talk my shit and tell a DJ what records to play. So I'm playing B.I.G. I'm playing, you know, J. And I'm playing all of the New York, you know, swag in there. And they loving it because, you know, they, like, they. That's, they, that's they what they love. love. That's, that's pop to them. Like. Love it. So the, American the hospitality was amazing. I remember I hosted a club in London by myself. I, I flew in a day ahead of everybody because I had a booking. Hosted London, and I never even talked about this. this is my first time I ever talked about. I hosted a, wow. a club by myself, Dolo. Picked me up, brought me to the spot. I got a VIP area the size of this studio, like the size of this room, and it's just me. Just bust with like ten bottles, magnum bottles though, so rock and champagne. And just not open space. So me, right, so I get out, I, I go to the DJ, do my my one two, yep. get everybody hyped, go back to the joint, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, this ain't it, and I'm seeing all of the dudes around and everybody just looking, and it just clicked. It was like, bring him in. So I go up to the security, I said, see them ten dudes, all them dudes in here. He's like, you sure? He's like, you sure? You He's like, yeah, I'm good. Let them all in. Came all in there. Said, drink. Drink, right? See them dudes right there? Let them all in. You start bringing people in that was in the club, whoever. Drink. Drink. Now go now go, now go, go get the queens and bring them in. Hell right? Yeah. And what, what, that, what that did was, and it was genuine. It's just, that's just who I am. Security was concerned. I'm, you know, from New York. You know, you know, you know what it is. You go out of town, catch us. Scheming, but what you're in London. Like, you're not I'm, even in. I'm you, bro. I'm you. You looking at me as this big celebrity entertainer and producer. At the end of the day, we the same. We bleed. The, we bleed the same blood. We're human. We human. Come have a good time with me, bro. And that turned into one of the best nights 
ever, where it's like everybody's having a good time. We're taking pictures. we drinking. The dudes got the chicks. Boom, boom, boom. And I was married at the time, so I didn't care nothing about that. Like, it, for me, it was just the vibe and the energy that I wanted to create in there to make everybody feel apart and not singled out and not left out. Or, or you in the air with 10 bottles and just, nah, come drink, bro. Because what am I going to do with 10 bottles? <laughs> Yeah, you I don't even remember even having a drink that night because I wanted to stay on point. You can't mix in light and dark. You know what I'm saying? So, show, yo. just just goes to show you. So, London, one of my favorite spots. Going to Africa was legendary. And what part of Africa? Um, South we Africa? went. We went. We went. It was a south. It might have been south, some north. We did. We did Namibia. We did uh, Angola. We did Ghana. We had did Johannesburg, oh, wow. Durban. Um, yeah, we went to a bunch of different places we and Africa. definitely. And I think one of the big, biggest misconceptions, and it's definitely something I had, I thought it was all jungle. <laughs> so I thought, like, when we land, we was going to land in the jungle, and there's going to be a lion right there. Yes, waiting sir. Waiting to just say hi. Like, you see cities and shit, and you're like, city, wow. Bro, like, tall buildings. Like, there's Bentleys out there. It's Benzes. But speaking of the know, jungle, Jordans, I got to like, know. I got to know. Like, did you see any animals when you was out there? And if you no, did. I, I didn't. So here's the thing. Trey and all of them went to the safaris and safaris, basically. I didn't go. Um... Like, and it's, what happens is, is, is misconceptions, right? Where, you know, people put things in your head that kind of clouds judgment and clouds knowledge and it prohibits you, you know, prohibits you from doing things. So, you know, you got to get shots to go out there. There's diseases, there's different things. So I, now the safari, going to safari is real risky. You can bit my mosquito, you're done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You get, oh, wow. there's a lot, there's a lot to it. So. In that moment, and I'm so disappointed in myself, and I'm just being transparent about it, you know, I'm disappointed in myself because I was thinking about all of that, and I didn't go. You missed the experience. Missed because the experience because I'm, about... you know, being fearful. You know what I'm saying? And I know I'm kind of like going on a little tangent, but it's like, you know, never, those that are tuned in, man, never let fear, you know, hold you back from being great because it can. It can hold you back from being great. It can it can hold you back from really truly living your dreams and and being all you can be. You know what I'm saying? Just being fearful. Like, am I good enough? Am I as good as? Am I dope? You know what I mean? Can I make songs like? You know what I'm saying? Like all of these different questions you ask yourself, and it creates fear. Because now what you're doing is you're comparing yourself. You can never compare yourself to anybody. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, there's one you. There's one me. You know, there's one king that's holding the camera. You know what I'm saying? And and that's the, that's the special thing. Whereas nobody's you. <laughs> So when you tap into that and you tap into the fact that I'm the only Amadeus that exists, you can have my name. Yeah, of Because there's other Amadeus. So there's a DJ Amadeus. There's, there's a lot of different Amadeus. But there's one me. You know what I'm saying? And you can't, even if you have the same name, you can't take me from me. Yeah. <laughs> one me, bro. Once you unlock your individuality, it's just like Absolutely. You, can, you can reach whatever heights are set out there for you. Right. Like, and really and, and, and you can go, and then here's the thing, you can go past. Like people used to say, People would say sky's the limit, and I disagree with that statement. It's way beyond that. Because if you can, we can go past the sky. It, it, we, they, they, they're in space. There is no limit <laughs> at the end of the day. There like, is. So sky's not the limit because you can go as past the sky. As long as you're alive, sky. you can continue to grow Absolutely. and exceed your own expectations. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. But, you know. I, I, You've probably done a lot of that, huh? Yeah. You, you know. Ever just, you ever, I mean, this is probably like an obvious thing, but like you ever just walk out the studio and just be like, damn, bro, how the did I do that? <laughs> like, At first, I used to do that, but then you know, you know, I'm spiritual, far from perfect, but spiritual. I'm tapped in, you know, and I know that God blessed me with this gift, you know, and and I understand that. So it wasn't really a shocking thing. It was just like a proud moment of tapping into what He gave me and understanding and knowing how to use what He gave me and just using it to the best of my ability. Because at the end of the day, with music, there's no rules, bro. There's no right or wrong. You know what I'm saying? There's no right or wrong approach to it. It's about expressing yourself and putting whatever you're feeling, which is genuine. That's the most th important thing, being genuine and really putting your music out and putting you out to the world. You know, if, and if you can't do that as an artist, as a creative person, this ain't the business for you. Because yeah. that's why, you know, people become su su successful. It's like, we know Trey love women, so he's going to talk, we're going to talk about women. Oh, we I love, love. <laughs> you know, we know Chris is a performer. He's an entertainer, so we know he's going to dance. He's going to spin. He's going to cartwheel. He's going to do all these different things, right? So now when it comes to you as an artist, it's like, what am I known for? What, what, what is my area of expertise? What is it my tone? Is it, is it how I write? You know, is it how I, is it my wordplay? Is it how I pick beats? Is, I, is it how I, you know, how I mix my songs? You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's about you tapping into 
what your greatness is and then just sharing it with the world. And at the end of the day, everybody's not going to accept it. Everybody's not going to appreciate it. Everybody's not going to value it. That's not really your concern. Your concern is just to get your music out to the masses and allow it to be your truth so that if you rock with it, you rock with it. You don't, you don't. Doesn't make me, you know, it, don't, it don't harm me. But it, it means what it means to me. Absolutely. And in that moment, it was everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, that's, that's big with music, just capturing those moments. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know? You, damn, <laughs> I'm just like now we can go all night, man. We can all, you know. I know we, I know, I know we got to rap, man. But we, we can go all night, man. But you, yeah. we, you know what we got to do? We got to do a part two. For sure. We do a part two. We, we come part back. Two. We chop it up because hey, there's it, so man. much more information we can give. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you know, you won't give them too much at one time. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So we'll we, give it we, a year. So yeah, yeah. We'll be nah, not even that long. <laughs> not even that long, man. Give me a few months, man. A few months, maybe a month or two. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot can happen within a month or two, and it could be reverse where. It's not so much of me talking, but it's more of so of you and your artistry and yep. and how what I said tonight and how that impacted you, you know, and the king that's behind the camera because he multi, he's a multitask and he's an artist as well. So it's like, what did you do with this information I gave you? Did you put it to use? Because if you put it to use and I come back in two months, you can say, I've done this, 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 and that. Oh, you're trying to interview me now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? And, and not, so much, not so much an interview, but if we having the same conversation it's a, and it's a part two, I can just challenge you on how you use this information I gave you two months ago. Of course. And, and to see how you tapped into that. Because it's not just about you sitting here and asking questions, right? And giving the audience, you know, information that could be a blessing to them. But it's about you tapping into what I'm saying, too. And yeah, even I'm King that's right behind now. the camera capping and, you know, tapping into what I'm saying and, and putting this to use. You know what I'm saying? So we here, man. You did a great job tonight, too. I'm proud of you, man. Because I know you're an artist. You, too. And, you know, I'm about to do this, man. You know, I'm 18 you, you, years know, in, man. I'm just having yeah, a conversation. You, you're deep. But, like, I'm saying just, like, you, you know what I mean? You taught me a lot right yes, now. Sir. And uh, to be honest, you gave me, like, a real good behind the scenes yeah, look. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to kind of create. Industry. Yeah. And uh. You know, for some, someone like me, like I was saying, coming from a small town and everything, mm -hmm. you know, I, there's not a lot of that. There's not a lot of access right. to that. So, right. like, right. this conversation, this means a lot to me. This was really good. I'm glad, my and, brother. And, um, you know, put it to use, man. hopefully Just when promise we see each other in a few months, we're going to... Yeah, let's do a part two, man. Let's yeah. do a part two right here, man. we get some Hennessy going again. Get some I'm going to bring some Bel Air. Shout, shout out to Bel Air. I'm official Black Bottle Boy, man. Uh, and shout out to uh, Bernia Smith. Today's her birthday. She's the, the head marketing uh, queen at Bel Air. Um, and we lit, man. So shout out to Belair, shout out to Boom Boo, shout out to Wayne, shout out to Rick Ross, shout out to Wiz Khalifa, McQueen, Violet Fog. See me rapping. Yep. So happy birthday again, Queen. We rocking, man. Platinum Boy Music King Amadeus, Strictly Hip Hop. We out here, man. Part two. You sure? We gonna do part oh, two? Oh, we doing part two. Let's do part we two. We gonna man. do a Make part sure you two. Lock in your hair, man. Hey, we about it.